Hello, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank the Ordesa Cathedral for inviting me to this seventh international scientific digital symposium on early nutrition and reprogramming of health and disease. And within this first session, about obesity and nutrition during the first 1,000 days, I am going to present a study on baby led weaning and what role does it play in obesity risk during the first years. This is a paper we published recently in Nutrients, and this was a study conducted by the Clinical Nutritional Group of Santiago de Compostela. We know obesity in children is one of the pandemics of the 21st century. There is a higher prevalence of overweight and obesity worldwide in all social groups, in all countries, and it has increased from 4% to 18%. And in the European Union, one in three 11 year olds are overweight or obese. And this is important because obese or overweight children have a high risk of becoming obese or overweight adults. And the prevalence of overweight or obesity can appear at a later age and there is a higher risk of comorbidities, respiratory, metabolic, or cardiovascular comorbidities. And when talking about comorbidities, we also have to mention psycho-emotional and psychosocial alterations and nutritional alterations, because usually overweight and obese children usually have nutritional deficits due to a bad diet and because the body fat in the case of vitamin D doesn't allow it to work properly. In Europe, we see an increase of the prevalence from north to south, and in southern Europe, we had the Mediterranean diet and Atlantic diet that are traditionally healthy. However, there is a high prevalence of obese and overweight in young generations who don't abide by the traditional diets. And we see that there are different risk factors. We have genetic factors and environmental factors for the development of overweight in infancy. When we talk about environmental factors, we are referring to dietary habits and the reduction of physical activity due to a higher activity with screens. And the first 1,000 days of life are very important. You know how in the fifth or sixth year, there is a fat rebound. And with regard to the first 1,000 days of life, we're talking from the moment of gestation till the end of the second year. And it's a window of opportunity for preventive strategies that can prevent overweight and obesity and within these strategies we would have supplementation and with regard to supplementation or complementary feeding we are still developing different strategies and in 2017 the ESPG HAN published a paper a positioning paper regarding the introduction of solids and liquid different from formula or breast milk. The question is when should complementary feeding be introduced and how and when? The WHO recommends exclusive breastfeeding during the first six months of life. In any case, no food different from formula or breast milk should be introduced before four months, but it shouldn't be later than six months. And with regard to the type of food, uh, 
allergenic foods may be introduced at any time after four months gluten may be introduced between four and 12 months but the recommendation is that the consumption of large quantities should be delayed and avoided during the first weeks of introducing gluten and during the complementary feeding period we should give meat or iron rich food and all children should receive complementary feeding in iron and no sugar or so should be added to the complementary feeding another typical question on which this presentation will be based today is how the traditional spoon feeding or standard winning i.e. is to mash food or grind food using a spoon so what is the baby led winning it's when you offer variety of whole foods and then the infant auto self selects them and self feed self feeds itself we have for example a study by rapley in 2005 that seems that baby led weaning can help with the infant's appetite control and this leads to higher levels of uh, society and in this way there is a protection against overweight at a later age however the results of the different papers that have been published are contradictory at a popular level baby led weaning is becoming increasingly popular however there is a little high quality evidence and the main concerns about baby lead weaning is the risk of not ingesting enough nutrients such as iron and zinc as well as the risk of choking with regard to complementary methods is the bliss that's the baby led interaction of solids it's a modified way of baby led weaning where the foods that are iron rich and energy dense are uh, are offered and we avoid foods that have a high risk of choking in this systematic review we apply the prisma guidelines and the items of the most interesting peer reviews and it was uh, filed at the prospero the international prospective register for systematic reviews and the review question was the following does the baby lend winning approach decrease the risk of obesity in children we apply the picos criteria for the inclusion of the studies the population was infant and children with no age limitation the intervention was the baby led weaning approach the comparison was the standard or spoon fed weaning approach and the outcome was to have weight body mass index and prevalence of overweight data and the study type was controlled trials and observational studies and the literature Search was done through PubMed, Web of Science, Embass, and Cochrane. And the inclusion criteria were randomized control trials or observational studies that were comparing weight or BMI in baby led winning and spoon fed infants published in English or in Spanish from 2000 to March 2021 exclusion criteria were reviews guidelines letters commentaries of books and all of those texts that did not address to infant weight or BMI as an outcome or those for which we didn't have the complete text with regard to this prisma flow diagram we identified 917 studies and we kept 747 in the end after 
assessing the abstract, we eliminated 735 and we assessed uh, 12 full text studies. The rest were eliminated because we didn't have the children's age group or because there were no baby led winning data or weight data or because it was no original research because there were reviews or commentary because they were not in humans or were not in English or Spanish. And from the full text articles, we uh, eliminated four and we included eight, uh, six randomized control studies and six observational studies. This flow diagram was created by independent examiners and the discrepancies were assessed by to independent researchers. With regard to the results, we see that from the eight studies included, two were randomized controlled trials, six were observational studies, four cross-sectional, one longitudinal, one cross-sectional plus longitudinal were all published between 2011 and 2020. And the uh, children had been recruited from June 2006 to February 2018. Four were from the United Kingdom, two two from New Zealand and two from Turkey. The age of this study population was from birth to 78 months and the number, total number of participants was 2,875 infants, 486 in the randomized cross control trials. And we had 2,120 online questions and 1,430 children had been fed by baby led winning and 339 with partial baby led winning and 1,435 with a spoon feeding or standard feeding. In terms of the risk of bias assessment, given that this was a systematic review with a moderate to high risk of bias, we applied the Dogen and Taylor tools. The Dogen showed a moderate risk of bias, mainly due to the fact that we didn't find the pre-registration of the trial and the Taylor one was high because it didn't state why those data had been lost. In terms of the assessment of the observational studies, we applied the Robbins one tool and the Brown and Lee of 2015 and the Townsend Pitchford of 2012 with a high risk of bias because there was no pre-registration of the studies and there was no analysis of the confusion variables. In the findings, we established that there was a considerable variation in the results, so no reliable recommendations can be established. The findings of the observational studies can be influenced by different factors and must be interpreted with caution, and the risk of bias is moderate to high in all the studies because we are talking about just eight studies. The Dogen study is the most recent randomized clinical trial with 280 breastfed infants. And the inclusion criterion was breastfed infants. 142 were receiving baby lead weaning or bliss. You know how bliss is introducing highly uh, uh, foods rich in iron and zinc, and zinc and foods that do not cause choking. And six visits were done, follow-up visits. And the children were assessed from the age of five months to 12 months. Then we have the Taylor study 
of 2017 with 206 women in late pregnancy with 166 infants that were fed through baby led weaning and bliss and there were different follow-up visits and these 206 women in late pregnancy were assessed at 12 months and 166 infants were assessed at 24 months 88 on baby led winning and bliss and 78 with traditional spoon feeding and at the dogan study we see how spoon fed children at 12 months have significant more weight than baby led winning children that had no overweight at 12 months and the children in the control group didn't have a low weight at 12 months and we do see this in two percent of the children fed through baby led winning in taylor's study there are no significant differences in the bmi at 12 months or 24 months however there's a higher risk of overweight in baby led winning fed children at 12 months 2.5 more risk and at 24 months it's 1.8 more risk than children that receive spoon feeding but these differences are not significant why do we see different findings between these two trials the dogon trial and the taylor trial well there are other factors that can influence weight gain for example the type of milk that is used and it's still the main food during this period the energy intake the energy self-regulation and also demographic variables or the weight gain of the mother during pregnancy or the weight of the mother in general in the case of taylor it did not include breastfeeding as an inclusion criterion and the follow-up periods are different with dogan it's at uh, 12 months with taylor it's at up until 24 months according to these studies According to the six observational studies, we see that the results are more similar to that of Taylor's trial. For example, in Towson and Pitchford study of 2012 in the United Kingdom, it included 155 parents and it included all the children. And, and the children were included up to 78 months. So it included that period of fat rebound because it's an adiposity risk factor and it's a an window of opportunity for intervention. These children were included from 20 to 78 months of age and the data is collected through a survey regarding the baby led winning method and the blw children had a lower bmi than children that were spoon fed and also a lower obesity level it's 1.6 percent of baby led winning group versus 12.7 percent of the spoon fed group and the uh, low weight was higher in the baby led winning group in 2015 we have the brown and lee study with 298 children that came from a previous study a cross-sectional study these are infants of 18 to 24 months of age self-reported where baby led weaning shows that in versus the um, spoon fed children that had a higher weight at 18 months and the 
baby led weaning group had a less overweight than the traditional spoon fed children. This is Karman's study, an observational study conducted in Turkey with 485 mothers at six months and 24 months of the infants. And it didn't define well the baby led winning, but in any case, the baby led winning group had less overweight versus the spoon fed children. Additionally to the feeding method, there are many other factors that can have an impact on a child's weight. For example, the type of milk and Jones in 2019 in the United Kingdom, taking into account the type of milk fed to the infants of three to 12 months of age, and he makes uh, some measures and he takes some measures. This is the cross-sectional study. And then we have the longitudinal data set at 16 weeks later. And in the group of baby led winning, we have infants that are only fed through this method or mostly through this method. And the spoon fed and formula fed children had a higher weight than those being breastfed. So breastfeeding seems to prevent weight increase in versus the children who are spoon fed, but we see no significant differences in depending on the type of milk fed. And we have the different scores that are not statistically significant. Then FOOS observational study from 2018 in New Zealand included 876 parents and there is no difference in the score in the size between those who received fully baby led winning feeding and those that re that received spoon feeding at six months and the anthropometric variables were properly collected and then we have the brown and lilo cross sectional study with 604 mothers of spoon fed children and there were no significant differences at six months or estimated current weight and all the anthropometric variables were self-reported so for as limitations of this review, we have to state that we have very few studies, only eight and only two are randomized controlled trials. And the sample size is small in most of these studies. Additionally, we have different data sources that are measured by different search teams. Very often they are self-reported. Very often they don't measure the adiposity gain and this is an a factor that influences on weight gain and there are different nutritional indexes and the risk of bias is moderate to high additionally we have to take into account that the children's weight and nutritional indexes showed normal values according to gender and age in most cases and what are the perspectives for the future we I think that the baby-led interest studies are very interesting, but only three new studies have been published since the last systematic review on baby-led weaning. So we need more studies, particularly randomized controlled trials, and future studies should use pre-registration and include weight gain velocity and use longer follow-up periods and control the uh, con 
co-founders co such as birth weight, duration of breastfeeding, the weight gain during pregnancy, and even the gut microbiota in the children. So the findings of this systematic review are not conclusive. Um, we need more clinical trials and longer prospective longitudinal studies using a co-founder controls and also including several body composition variables and weight gain speed. There's no doubt that complementary feeding is an opportunity period to prevent overweight and obesity in children, adolescents, and adults, and of the associated comorbidities. So we should continue studying this period of life where nutritional education is very important. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you.